We are here to we are here to fellowship one with another and with you. And we know that our fellowship is in the spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Our hearts are together. Our minds are together. And we are one people. Jesus. And we are one with you. And we receive your life. We receive your word, which is your power to work for, in, and through us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, when we... When you open the word of God, what happens is, uh, and you are looking at it or discussing it, what you are doing is that you are activating the power of God. Amen? Every time we say, Lord, send your power, what does he send? He sends his word. Because his word is his power. Amen? Praise God. And this morning we are going to uh, activate and enjoy some of that. We're going to continue from where we stopped last week. Last week, we looked at a scripture in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sin in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, might now live unto righteousness, for by his stripes we were healed. Amen? Come on, amen? He himself bore. So in case somebody tells you, well, your sin is not truly washed away, or God is not, has not forgiven you your sins, you can say, no, he personally carried my sin in his own body. It, it, this is no hearsay. And this is still in the series of uh, be, being an influencer for the kingdom of God. Amen? Being a kingdom influencer I think this should be the, part, the fifth part, right? The fifth part, rather. The fifth part, rather. So we're going to look at that verse again. All right? Look at it again, please. It says, he himself carried. The word ball means to carry. Our sins in his own body on the tree. That we've been dead the, my, the other translation I'm using too is a ESV as well as the King James. That is English Standard Version. It says that we might die to sin and live to righteousness by his wounds. We have been healed. We have been healed. Praise God. And we also looked at the, the Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that says that he was made sin. Who knew no sin that we may be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. In other words, it, at the court, the one that was guiltless was pronounced guilty. And he was sentenced to serve the punishment instead of the guilty one. So when the When the, when, the, when the guilty one was acquitted and the, the, the innocent one was found guilty, it wasn't because the innocent one committed any crime. It was because the guilt was transferred. Amen? And innocence was exchanged. The innocence of the innocent was given to the guilty. And the guilt of the guilty was transferred upon the innocent. And that was how you and I today have now become uh, children of God. Amen? Can you please help me? Don't let your mind wander. Let's be together. You know how it is when, when we are together. I, I hear God better. All right? I don't want to... Uh, when there are interferences, it, it affects me. Amen? Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your help. 
All right. So we're going to look at that. Every scripture, everywhere where the, the Bible talks about the forgiveness of sin, he also talks about healing for the physical body. In Greek, in Hebrew, in Latin, anywhere where the Bible talks about healing, it is not referring to spiritual healing. It's referring to physical healing. The entire scriptures. Amen. Come on, amen. Anywhere where the Bible talks about even the Hebrew Bible, where healing is mentioned, is not about the 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 it's not about the spiritual healing. Spiritual sickness is called sin. And that was why the blood of Jesus was shed. I, I think God is reaching out to someone. So maybe it will help us to um, gather our thoughts. You know, let, just give me a minute. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bring all thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus. And we come against doubt and distractions. And we take authority over every spirit that will want to interfere uh, with any one of us in the name of Jesus. We bring our hearts and mind to you, focused and fixed on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you have discomfort in your palate, um, palate is to the throat, the palate to the throat, or you know somebody with that discomfort, uh, I think God is, is going to, he wants that person healed. So as I was saying, everywhere where sin is forgiven, healing is also offered. Amen? Come on now. Come on now. Everywhere where sin is forgiven, healing is offered. Everywhere where sin is forgiven, Healing is of a Psalm 103, Psalm 103, let's look at it from verse 1 to 3. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits? He what? He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. Amen. Is there anyone struggling with the issue of pardonable or unpardonable sin anywhere? Know that you are, have never committed an unpardonable sin. Amen. So whatever sin you may be struggling with, sometimes Satan piles up guilt upon us. You know, just know that God has forgiven you. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, he says, surely he had borne uh, griefs, the word griefs there is talking about pain and sorrow, sicknesses. Can you help me with uh, something over here, please? All right. But the Bible says, we thought, you we human beings thought that God punished him because of, our, of his own faults. But the scripture says, uh, but he was pierced. To pierce somebody means, you know, they pierced him with a spear, right? They, they stabbed him. He was pierced for our iniquities, all right? For our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Thank you so much. He was pierced for our iniquities. He was pierced for our transgressions. What are transgressions? Transgressions is when you go outside the line, outside the law, okay? He was crushed for our iniquities. In other words, it was the chastisement, the punishment that bought us peace was upon him. If you hopped in your car today and you hit the highway and the policeman stopped you and said, do you have a license, uh, a drive, how do you call it? Insurance, insurance for your car. And you say, yes, they will say, show me proof of insurance. Am I correct? The proof of insurance that you are qualified not you're not supposed to beg for healing, but you are qualified to walk in perfect health is that Jesus forgave your sin. So can I tell you something here? And I hope, I, I hope that this, this will settle it for anyone. 
you cannot have a dollar bill with one face. It doesn't work. That's fake. Am I correct? A dollar bill has uh, two faces. The pictures are not the same. But if, the, if it's one face dollar, it's not working. It's not going to work. It's not considered a legal tender. When Jesus went to the cross, the same faith that you placed in him that saved your soul, that same faith also procured your healing. Mm. So we don't need to pray specially or long for or petition, specially after we've been forgiven to be healed. Hallelujah. Am I making? Okay, I'm communicating. It's one for, for two. One, how do you call it? Two for the price of one. Healing and salvation are offered by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, amen. But you might ask, why? Why? You know, before we even go into the why, let us also examine some of the errors that we have in the body of Christ. God does not try us with sicknesses. He doesn't. It's not supported. That ideology is not supported by scriptures. God does not need to discipline and train his children with tools from the devil's hand. Sickness belongs to the devil. Why is Satan so much against humanity? Why does he want to attack you? Why does he target you? Why does he hate your being healthy? We're going to look at it now. All right? Because sin, oh, let me put it this way. Sin, sin nature is the nature of Satan. When that nature is planted in mankind or in the heart of a man, what happens is it produces fruit if it's allowed to stay. And those fruit come in fear, the fruit of the, 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 the fruit of sin, fear, anxiety, worry, all kinds of incurables. Actually, sin is a slow death. Amen. Is gradually limiting you, killing you slowly. That is what sin is. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And, and we have to understand here that when Jesus came, he could have come in on Friday morning, get killed on Friday afternoon, resurrect on Sunday morning, and head back to heaven. And we still would have been saved. But he came here to... He spent how many years? 33 and a half years on earth to give us an idea of what God's kingdom is, God's will is, who God is, what God's life is, what being a child of God is. This is the reason that he is the perfect example of living for God, living with God, living in God's life, amen, and enjoying the benefits of I mean, because God didn't want to give us just theory. So he had to come in. And then let me show you how it's done. And, and I want to tell you that Jesus did not come as half man, half God. Amen. He came fully as a man. No deity attached to him when he walked on earth. So when he was walking on water, raising the dead, that was a full human being. Not a divine person mixed 50% with divine, uh, with a, a natural person, no. The book of Philippians chapter 2 to told us, he said he emptied himself of this. If he was half human, hybrid, half human, half man, some of the things that were done, he, can, he couldn't die. He, would, he couldn't be tired. Amen. He couldn't be hungry. Amen. He would have been in different places at, at the same time. But he was limited to the land of Israel only. And he could be in one village at once, walking on one uh, back road at once. Amen. At one time. So his omni, omnipresence was left in heaven. Praise God. That was why 
if he was half man, half God, the th he say whatever I see my father do is what I'm copying and replicating. He said, of myself, I can do nothing, but what I see, I do. Of myself, I can do nothing. Why? Because limit the limit of a hum natural human being. Amen. Come on, amen. Praise God. Why did he do that? He did that so is to prove to us that this is the real state that we are being, are going to be brought into. This is the perfect state, how to live. He came to show us that as a natural human being, when you have the Holy Spirit living in you and you are focused on the heart of the Father, you can live this way too. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. That was why he said, I am the light, in case you're confused about what the original is, just focus on me. I am the light, in case you are in, in doubt about how to please God, just look at me. He's, he wasn't religious. He was bold. He wasn't fearful. There was no negativity out of his mouth. Amen. Given caring, anybody who called on him, he spoke the truth. He stood for the truth. He opposed lies and all falsehood. So you can see, this is what we are called onto. Amen. Come on. Called onto. And the reason he hated sickness so much was because God's intent is to live in human beings. <laughs> I feel like, amen. It is his intent to live in human beings. God has created many marvelous things. Nothing comes close to the human body. The scientists are still studying. They have been studying it from ages, from the, the time the world been studying the human body. They haven't finished studying it yet. It's an automated being. In other words, if it cracks, it can rebuild itself. That is how God designed the human body. Amen. Come on, amen. And what happened when sin came and man swallowed that sin and, start, and sin began to produce seeds of sin and, and take over the, the, the poison the spirit of a man, then sicknesses manifested, diseases manifested, lifespan became shorter and shorter and shorter. You know what I'm saying? All those diseases that the things that we are supposed to eat to renew, strengthen, revive our physical bodies now become poison to us. The soil became poison. The ordinary air, everything was infected, infected by sin. So when he came, what did he do? He tackled sin first. He took it out of the way. And then he said, I'm also taking all the byproducts of sin from you. He took sickness upon himself. The intention of God is to live in a perfect temple, not a temple that is raided by rodents. You know, what we call rodents? Rats and insects. Anybody likes to live? If you see a cockroach in your house, what do you do? You, can't, you don't stay until you get it out, right? Either dead or alive. He has, he has to go. Am I right? Now, if we, why? Because we know that roaches carry things that we don't want in our lives, in our bodies. That is what sin does. Too. Sin carry things that God does not want in his house. And you are the house of God. In the, throughout the book of the, the whole Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, God, the Spirit of Christ, by, through the prophets, announced if, ever so often how much God wants to live in the body of a human being. Amen. I think two, a, few, a few weeks ago, we looked at how God, the scripture say, God made the human being beautiful. Am I right? Esther was described as beautiful. Uh, uh, Joseph was described as handsome. Uh, every human being is beautiful. I have yet to see a human being that is ugly. I have never seen. Even if developmentally there are some defects, 
there is always something beautiful about either the teeth, the nose, the lips, the skin. You know, everyone has something ex that is excellent, that is beautiful. Amen.